Tubers, family and friends, here at the Golden Palace in Northwestern Mindanao. I'm, my name's Edward, and I'm back. And I've been away for about a week because YouTube put me in jail for a week. So I need to try to be more disciplined on what I'm saying because, again, we all know this. we don't have freedom of speech anymore. So you could say something... Even though you said this most likely was not the case and you don't know, if you still say it, you could end up being demonetized or, or your channel shut down for good or getting a strike against you or whatever it is. So you really have to watch what you say if you want to keep staying on this platform. Anyway, I got an awesome subject for you today and maybe it's going to be demonetized because it's a awesome video about Ronald Reagan and what he said at the United Nations in 1987 about aliens, okay? Aliens coming to Earth. Because a lot of you have heard in either conspiracy theories or whatever that we could get an alien invasion, you know, maybe it's a deception from the government you know, CGI or something like that, or maybe it's those of you that believe in aliens, like my, uh, I got people in my family that really believe in aliens and that we're gonna someday see a first contact on the earth. I don't personally believe that. I believe what Bible scripture says, but Ronald Reagan, I voted for him when I first turned 18 in 19, 81 when he became president of the United States and he had an alien uh, UFO encounter and I'm gonna play this video from YouTube I'm gonna I'm gonna hopefully not get demonetized or whatever but it doesn't matter the subject is what matters to me so here we go I'm gonna show you guys the video and then have a small discussion about what we're up against here with what's going in current events with worldwide nuclear threat right now in on the earth from Russia, North Korea, China, whatever. So here we go. Ron, this is Ronald Reagan and Merced, California. September 19th, 1974. California Governor Ronald Reagan along with the security detail, boards a Cessna aircraft bound for a fundraising event in Bakersfield. As the aircraft reaches an altitude of 35,000 feet, Governor Reagan is startled by a mysterious orb of light which appears to be flying alongside his plane. Ronald Reagan was flying in an airplane and had an encounter with an unidentified flying object. He asked the pilot to follow it. They followed it for a period of time. Reagan is enthusiastic about this. When he lands, he says, I just saw a UFO. He's not just being crazy. He saw the UFO. He knows exactly what it is. The pilot that corroborated Reagan's sighting was Air Force Colonel Bill Painter, who claimed that the UFO appeared to elongate and then rapidly shoot up into the sky. Some years later, the pilot was asked, did he really think that Reagan believed in UFOs? And the pilot said, after what we saw in the sky that night, how could anybody not believe in them? According to historians, it was this incident that sparked Ronald Reagan's lifelong interest and belief in UFOs. But unlike other politicians who suffered ridicule for such beliefs, Reagan did not, and for a very simple reason. His closest aides kept him from speaking publicly about his UFO experience and his belief in extraterrestrials. The people that worked for him really tried to keep Reagan under control, so to speak, because they knew that he was very interested in this subject and wanted to talk about it publicly. So they had to kind of keep the lid on it, if you will. But did the UFO sighting influence Ronald Reagan's policies after he became the 40th president of the United States? And if so, 
could this have also been due to the fact that once elected, he was given even more direct knowledge of an extraterrestrial presence here on Earth? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes. And for proof, they point to a mysterious document that surfaced in 2005. I became exposed to a very, very important document that March 6th to 8th, 1981, then brand new President Ronald Reagan was taken by his new CIA director, William Casey, to Camp David. With them were analysts from the CIA, the NSA, DIA. And this briefing boiled down to an introduction to Ronald Reagan of extraterrestrial species that William Casey was saying, sir, you need to understand that we are dealing with others on this planet. Curiously, throughout his presidency, Ronald Reagan brought up the subject of what would happen in the case of an alien invasion, most famously in 1987, when addressing the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? Reagan was the first one who said publicly, it just needs one extraterrestrial threat, and that would bring together the entire planet. So you have to ask yourself the question. So there you go. It's already been said by a U.S. president and almost everyone really honors and has a lot of respect for Ronald Reagan, of what he did as a president. And he was also uh, shot and could have easily died. For, and I think he took two or three bullets, right? Uh, and when he was assassination attempt on his life, and that was very near to this time that this alien thing happened. So maybe he was gonna release something and blow the lid off of this thing. Therefore, they allowed this attempt on him, right? We don't know that, and I don't know. I'm just, this is just guessing, disclaimer, disclaimer, right, guys? So it's the stage has already been set, so if what I think is going to happen, this is what the Holy Spirit's been telling me and other prophets, that this three days of darkness will happen upon the earth, and it will be an act of God per Bible scripture. It's already happened in the book of Exodus in Egypt. That Three days of darkness, one of the ten plagues that plagued Egypt because they wouldn't let God's people go and the Pharaoh suffered and all his people suffered and one of the uh, biggest plagues was three days of darkness those that were of the people and God's children of Israel had lights inside their homes but they were instructed to put the blood of the lamb over their doors and they would be safe right and uh, this three days of darkness descended upon the people there and that the ones that didn't have supernatural light or candlelight that, was, that believed in God was in a total darkness and they were frozen in it because the darkness was so thick that it was like a slime and it froze the people in place for three days and they couldn't even move. So this is the kind of darkness that's going to come again upon the earth to give the people one last chance to repent. And do you know what the Satan and the Antichrist are going to do at that time? They're going to spin that whole thing as the, as the aliens are the ones that descended the darkness upon the earth and then they and the reason they did it is to stop nuclear annihilation of the human race that's what the the narrative story is going to be and take all the glory away from god and give it 
the whole thing, the spin from all the media in the world is going to, because they're going to have, you know, they're going to, these aliens are going to appear after the three days of darkness, and they're, they're going to put all of the glory on these aliens. That is what I think going to happen. The Holy Spirit's been really tugging this on my heart, guys. And this three days of darkness is going to happen anywhere between now and uh, the first month of the Hebrew calendar in 2025. And other prophets have already confirmed this, that during Passover time, 2025, because that's when three days of darkness descended upon Egypt back in the day, right? And it's, so the same time period, Passover, which is like March 2025, this is what's going to happen. But it could be, God could change his mind on that, and this his timing could be different. So it could happen. Be ready. Be spiritually ready. Be ready mentally, spiritually, uh, physically. Be ready for it, because it's coming. Because the wrath of God is really bearing down upon the people of the earth, and he's going to give, his love is so great for the people, he's going to give one last chance to repent, and turn to him. And those that don't, then you're, the nuclear annihilation's coming. Because then the whole world will be saying, peace and safety. The aliens saved us from nuclear annihilation. And then shortly thereafter, the nuclear bombs are going to rain down upon, especially the U.S. Now that's what the Holy Spirit has been leading me to th to think and to, and that's why I'm warning the people as a watchman throughout the world on this video to watch for. So let's go to the whiteboard real quick, guys. And so will the aliens arrive to save humanity from nuclear annihilation? This is what Ronald Reagan thought, that if the whole world would unite if aliens had a first contact on the earth, and unite all nations, right? And I think this will happen, but I don't think it's going to happen until after the three days of darkness. I mean immediately. After the first day the darkness lifts, the whole spin is going to... Once the, the world starts, uh, the electricity starts coming back on and things start getting back to normal after a day or two, once the worldwide television media is online... Then they're gonna they're gonna say, oh, see, here's the aliens. They're the ones that gave us the darkness to stop humanity from annihilation of itself, and blah blah blahs, right? And to try to take this and spin it to the Antichrist or Satan's side. When this whole three days of darkness biblically is last chance to repent of sin. And then shortly thereafter, you're going to get the nuclear annihilation, guys. And the thing is, starting in September 2024, uh, September 27th, I believe, during the Feast of Atonement, it's the shofar is going to blow, and that's going to be the, the one year of the Jubilee, the 50-year Jubilee in the Hebrew calendar. And this is the last Jubilee of seven Jubilees or 70 jubilees so this is the last one before the time of tribulation and christ's second coming and and all what's in revelation guys this is the end we are talking this is the end of it guys so you need to be ready absolutely ready so is this going to be an act of God with this three days of darkness? People are going to be asking themselves, was this an act of God or was this the aliens that have arrived to save us, right? Or is this the last chance to repent of sin? And is, is this an act of God, the three days of darkness, or did the aliens just save us, right? This is going to be the media worldwide spin, guys, and it's going to be deception, or is it the truth? Do you believe in alien, that the aliens are going to save us? Or do you believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior? You decide. You guys decide. It's all up to you. And this is kind of what's going to happen, I think, on the timeline, guys. Then after this, 
like I say, if after they spin it with the aliens saved us, you might get three, three, four, five, six months, maybe until the the Feast of Trumpets in October of 2025, and then then the, that's when the nuclear bombs are going to start annihilating the Earth. Because, you know, peace and safety throughout the world. The world is united. Blah, blah, blah. The aliens saved us. Think about it, guys. This is not, thus saith the Lord. I did not hear this from the Lord. I did not hear this from Jesus Christ, our, that is our Lord. But this is, I know that the three days of darkness is going to happen. And I know that there's deception everywhere, guys. It's everywhere. So many layers deep that you don't even know what side is up or what side is down. That's what's going on in the world right now, guys. So make your own decision. I love you all. And just really think about this and bring it to prayer. And, and ask the Holy Spirit what you think, uh, what he thinks about this scenario, and just completely immerse yourself in the red letters of Jesus Christ's word in the Bible, guys, and immerse yourself in prayer and fasting, because that's what the Bible says to do. So I love you all so much. Why do I love you? Because Christ Jesus loves you, and he commanded every neighbor to love thy neighbor. Second highest commandment, guys. So I love you. Take care. And God bless you all. Amen.